Bob Arum's not right. Bob Arum's not right. Uh, he shouldn't have got upset with with Bud Crawford because him and Bo Mack, his trainer, went and um, got a lawyer. We can't trust you, man. You know, every time Bob Arum gets in front of a mic and they talk about Bud Crawford, there's nothing good he has to say. Mm-hmm. You know. It's funny, cause like I said, when I text you up, I just got through watching a little segment on YouTube. It was the, it just happened like yesterday or today, and they were showing Bud Crawford, you know, like live. He was in a vehicle or truck or something, him and his partners were not. And, uh, and they was in the truck talking about it. He and he said, and then they was like going back over what Bob Aaron said about him all that shit. And that's when Bud was like, "Well, if he if he feel this way, let me go. Let me go. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm like on wait for October. You know what I'm saying? Let me go. Let me go. Yeah. And see, that's why Bud got them lawyers and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Bob is not saying nothing positive, and you know if if the media hears, of course Bud hears it. You know. So yeah, yeah. there's no need for Bob Arum to get upset with Bud Crawford for doing what he did, and, and I agree yeah, totally. I'm not gonna just sit there. Ain't no man gonna sit there and let a motherfucker just talk bad on, talk down on his name and all that shit, and blah blah blah. Whoopie whoop. Ain't nobody gonna sit there and take it like that and shit, man. You'll be a damn fool, man, if you don't stand up for yourself. I totally agree. I totally agree. I Boy, totally I agree. Fool, fool, talking all that shit. I'm get, I got my lawyer team, a legal team now. Since you, since you dissatisfied with me and shit, whatever, we'll do, we'll, I'm not going to stand here and take it shit, but get, let me get on. I'm, let me get on down, shit. I totally like, agree. If you don't want to release me, that's why I got these lawyers. We're going we gonna to take you to court, shit. We're going to get about this contract. I totally agree. You know, uh... Like, you know, if, whatever, if he got a fight set up already, he'll honor that, but besides that, after that shit, man, fuck you. Right, right. I understand that. So maybe Terrence Crawford. I don't know if, he, if he already signed to a deal to fight somebody. He has a. The Pacquiao deal ain't, 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 ain't official. The name signed, the name did. Well, that's that's the thing. He has uh, another year with with uh, with Bob Arum, and you know his contract is over. You know October twenty twenty one. So he 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 say. Uh, him and his trainer, Bo Mack, went to the lawyer and they say, look, if we can't get the ball rolling, you know, we're we going to get up out of here. And the fight that we want is eight-time division Manny Pacquiao. That's who we want. You know, we're not worried about nobody else. We want Manny Pacquiao. You know, Keith Thurman couldn't do it. Uh, I'll do it. You know, so that's who they want. So if they can't get the ball rolling with the Manny Pacquiao, uh, they're going to roll out and do their own thing. So that's why Bob Arum is uh, upset. But I, like you said, I can't trust you. Uh, uh, you know, even though, Bob, even though Terrence Budd says that he hasn't been chasing uh, like Earl Spence, or or or, not, or or you keep Thurman's has been chasing none of these guys. Who he really wanted to fight was was Manny Pacquiao and and Bob Arum, like you like you had told me earlier that that you know Bob Arum was out reaching out and, and trying to pay these guys, you know. But when the COVID nineteen happened, that fight didn't materialize with Bud Crawford and Manny Pacquiao because. That fight was supposed to materialize right before the COVID nineteen, but it didn't materialize, and and so now Bob is gonna have to get the ball rolling. You know, uh, could it be that Manny Pacquiao wants too much money? I don't. I don't know. I doubt that though. I doubt that. And then they should get the ball rolling and get that fight happening, or he's gonna roll out 
uh, go to PPC and, and, and jump with Al Heyman. Whatever be will be. Whatever be will be. <laughs> right. And now, now, uh, uh, Danny Swift Garcia with his left hook. I think he's gonna need more than just that powerful left hook to uh, get rid of Earl Spence. Yeah, well, I will tell you, he don't need that. Lift. I mean, he can go to the body with, with, with either hand. You know what I'm saying? It could be a straight to the body. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, saying hit him in a solar plex, all kind of stuff, man. You just don't always have to go sideways on him. Right, attack his body. Yeah. Go ahead. Whenever you see an opening on his body, just attack it. Danny Garcia shoots, shoots nice body shots. You know, mm -hmm. come at Earl Spence at the first three rounds. One, two, three. Nothing but body shots. Like you said, attack the head a little bit, but hit the body. Focus on the body the first, you know, beginning of the round. Wear him down. Give him something to think about other than just throwing that left hook to the head. You yeah, know. when you touch somebody in the body and they feel it, 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 it stays on their mind, man. They be like, okay, he targeting this. And it, 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 it sticks with it. It messes with their minds. That's part, of, that's part of the sweet science. You know what I'm saying? Right. When you start juking that body, at first they're going to act like it ain't doing no damage. You see the wear and tear. You see the wear and tear by round, round three. <laughs> <laughs> You'll feel it. Yeah. Like I said, it, it, it's just, it, it, plus, it, man, it's just getting real hard. It get, go sit back on that stool and get up for the next round because you be feeling it, man. Once your body, because you be in the rain, you know, you be tensed up, you know, in there, you know. You know, as far as, you know, in their box and you moving around and stuff and you, Try to keep everything tight, but shit, when you sit down, you just relax, man. You start feeling that shit when you get back up. You start feeling that, right. You be like, ooh, wee, I'm kind of sore right there when I tighten right back up. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So. You feel that soreness. You're going to feel it. You're going to feel it. So, uh, give you something to think about. Yeah, give you something to think about. Um, But like I was saying, man, Danny Garcia knows that the loss with. Thurman and Porter, you know, uh, championship fights, you know. And to lose his third championship fight, if he should lose his third championship fight with Earl Spence, you know, that wouldn't be the end for Danny Garcia. I still don't think that would be the end for him. Nah, he is. You know. He is. He is. He is. Persevere. You know what I'm saying? He'll still he'll be boxing, but I don't know who his next opponent would be, though. You know, he has Keith Thurman. He has uh, Ennis, I think if he fight Keith Ugas. Thurman again, I, think, I think he'll destroy Keith Thurman. Through. You know, that, that that's the fight that he needs, the rematch, right? Yeah, I think, that, I, I think, he, I think he'll destroy Keith Thurman. I think, he might, I think he might even retire Keith Thurman if Danny Garcia fought him again. That's the fight he needs then. then yeah. And then he can come back and fight Porter. Yeah. You see, those if, if he should lose, those are the two fights that he needs on his comeback. Your your revenge fight against Thurman and, and Porter. The only thing about it, Danny Garcia's dad been talking shit. Now he's you been know, he been talking shit about about Tim. Oh, 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 another one. Is that right? Yeah, man, so I, I hit you with that sneaky one right there. Yeah, you talking shit. <laughs> yeah, you caught me with a nice, he caught me with a nice left hook. <laughs> yeah, man, he, been, he, he talking shit about Bud, about his, his rankings and all this shit. Whoopie whoop, man, just trash talking, man. You know. Not, 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 not Garcia, but his dad. Angel, dad. Angel. Yeah. Angel Garcia, Danny Garcia's father. Yeah. yeah, Angel talks a lot, of, man. He talks a lot. You know, he told uh, in the media, he said, uh, if Danny hits Earl with a left hook, he's not getting up. You know, you know, he knows. If anybody gets hit, hit with a left hook, 
<laughs> Ain't nobody getting up. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, <clears throat> excuse me. I, I believe Angel knows that he came up short against Keith Thurman. Angel knows he came up short against Sean Porter. He knows if he comes up short against Earl Spence, who's undefeated, who's the IBF WBC Green Belt champion, Walter Wade champion, undefeated. He knows if he comes up short against him again that his son has to work his way back up the rankings because his stock is going to drop. You know, but he will only have three losses against three good people, three good champions. So it's not he over for him. Can he break the ceiling? Yeah. <laughs> you got to break that plateau. Then can your stocks go through the roof? You got to make your stocks go through the roof. Break that plateau. Break the ceiling. That's right. So, uh -huh. so he has to, you know, go in there and do what he has to do and, 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 and fight a good fight. And like you said, um, not just focus on throwing that left hook to the head, focus on the body. Because, like you said, Earl's meant is he, he's too smart, and he knows that Danny got a good left hook. He knows that he got a powerful left hook. He knows he's a good counter puncher with the left hook. So he's going to be too smart to get caught with that left hook. Uh-huh. You're going to have to come with something different. So, yeah. yeah. It's going to be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a, a chess match up in there. Very, very entertaining. Very intriguing. Very, very exciting. Very, very good match. Highly, highly anticipating good match. You know? Um, Earl Spence. Earl Spence. Earl Spence got that ring IQ, so, you know. Earl Spence got a fantastic ring IQ. He's That's what I'm saying. He's too smart. He knows. He knows. He's going to have to come with something else. Um... In a recent interview, uh, Earl Spence stated, you know, Danny Garcia got one one gear is, is being patient and counter punching. That's all he do. And, yeah, man, but he gonna have to, he gonna break out of it. Yeah, break he, out of that, man. Like I said, man, he gonna have to come with it, man. Like I said, the key to him, man, is them body blows, man. If he, if he, if he can land a bunch of body shots. You know what I'm saying? Slow him down. Yeah, man. You know, protect himself at all times. <laughs> That's what he has to but do. He's going to have to, he gonna, because when you throw them body shots, he's going to have to keep his hands busy, too, as far as going back upstairs and stuff, man. Just keep him. You know what I'm saying? You, uh, you want to keep your opponent, uh, opponent on balance anyway, shit. Right, right. So, what? So like, uh, he's going to have to mix it up real good, man. He's going to have to mix it up. Got to mix it up. That, that he got to get out first gear and, and start switching gears up on Earl. Yeah, you know? he, he, he just he just do do like uh, one two three combinations, man. You know what I'm saying? One two three combination. It's gonna be a good fight. It's gonna be a good fight. Yeah. Danny's gonna have to mix it up, and, and, and like you said, he's gonna have to mix it up. He said he know what he did wrong with Keith Thurman, and you know that's starting off too slow. Right? I'll tell you, man. I'll I tell him, man. He's, man. If I was in the corner, I'd be like, man, look, double tap the body and then a one, two, three combination upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's what he's going to have to do. That's what he's going to have to do. I'm with you on that. I'm 100% I'm with you on that. But uh, it's going to be a good fight, man. We're going to see what happens. Um. Earl Spence, no, this is his second chance to uh, claim himself as the truth, you know? Yeah. Because he could have, he could have, you know, and he knows that he could have passed away. That that, that was a, a, a highly uh, fatality, not fatality, but a horrific accident, you know? And it could have been, yeah, fa it could have been fatal. Action. It could have been fatal because that was, that was in, in, incredible. And you, after you seen the footage... How did he survive that, right? Yeah. Well, you know, they gave him a new out, output on life, too. Uh, if, if he wanted, he hungry. He wanted, I guess he's going to go ahead and do what he got to do. Right. You know, he said, uh, 
He said he didn't want no tune-up fight. You know, a tune-up fight, he wouldn't have took the fight as serious. He wouldn't have trained as hard. His mind wouldn't have been as right. So he said, I want, I want, I want to fight Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia, you know, um, he, he's, a, he's an ex-champion. Uh, he can fight. He has a chin. You know, he can counter punch. And he said, that right there, I know that I can't be playing and I have to train. And I have to be very, very, very serious. And I got to come with it and I can't be playing. So that's why I didn't want a tune-up fight. And that's why I chose Danny Garcia. Because I know Danny Garcia can come to fight and he has a chin and he's ready. And, you know, and Danny Garcia, he has to be ready. Because the loss with, with Keith Thurman and Sean Porter... And another loss, man, you know this is going to be a fight. Yes, sir. This is going to be a fight. And, uh, and, and, and Earl Spence, man, he knows that, you know, he has to do what he has to do. And, and Danny Garcia straight up said it. You know what? Earl Spence is not the truth. He's a liar. I'm going to... Wait, say it again. Wait, say it again. Danny, Danny Garcia said, Earl Spence Jr. is not the truth. He's a liar. I'm going to expose him December 5th when I knock him out or when I stop him. You know, so the fight is going down. It's going down. The fight is going down. And, 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 and Mike Tyson and Roy Jones, uh, even though it's supposed to be an exhibition ma match... And one of the, the, the stipulations in the fight is, is no knockouts. It's an exhibition, uh, two minute, eight rounds. Um, no, you're not supposed to knock nobody out, but man, look at here. Tyson got on these these 12 ounce gloves and they fight with no headgear, man. And you know, they gonna go out there popping each other, man. And Roy's, you know, I look at it like this. Roy's gonna basically go out there and fill Mike Tyson out and, and Mike Tyson's gonna and, and Roy's gonna be like, I'm gonna hit Mike Tyson as hard as he hits me. So I ain't gonna hit Mike no harder than he hits me. And, and, and if Mike Tyson drops me, it's gonna be a full out war. If he gets back up, if he gets back up, you know, yeah, if he gets back up, it'll be a full blown out war. So Roy Jones got a lot of heart, you know that. Roy got a lot of heart, man. That's what I'm saying. If if, if if Tyson gets a little, a little beside himself, get a little happy, man, and, and clip uh, Roy on the chin, and, and Roy go down buzzing, it's, it, Roy gonna get up in his own. You know how Roy is. Like you said, he got a lot of heart. His, his mind gonna click. So that's how that fight's gonna go down. It's supposed to be an exhibition match. Tyson hit Roy. A little too hard, but not hard enough. And Roy get back up, it's on. And then we'll see what happens after that. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, uh, man, and we'll see what happens, uh, with, uh, Canelo, Canelo, man, um, Canelo Alvarez and, uh, Callum Smith. Man, now listen here. Listen here. Now, the last time that Canelo fought at 168, he fought Rocky Feldon. Callum Smith is not no Rocky Feldon, bro. I said the last time that Canelo fought at 168, he fought uh, Rocky Feldon. I said... Callum Smith is not no Rocky Feldon. You know, he knocked Rocky Feldon out with, with just body shots. Every time he was touching his body, he was going down, going down. Yeah. Callum Smith is not no 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 Rocky Feldon now. Callum Smith actually can upset Canelo. Yeah, yeah, he can. He can upset Canelo. Uh yeah. The thing about that, Callum Smith can box. Callum Smith is a nice counter puncher. And he has a little power. Yeah. And he knows how to finish you. Yeah. Okay. And on the other side. 
on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But on the other side, but hold on. With those four attributes that Calvin Smith possesses, uh, boxing is one that aggravates Canelo. His boxing skills is not that great. It's getting better, but it's, uh, they're not on um, Calvin Smith's level. Not to me. Calvin Smith, he, he can box. Uh, they're both good counter punchers. Uh, as far as speed, I'm going to give the speed to Callum Smith. Yeah. Callum Smith is a lot faster than Canelo. Yeah. Uh, ring IQ, I'm going to give it to uh, Callum Smith. Yeah. So it's going to be Canelo's power. And I'm, I'm going to give you one, one thing you missed, though. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Give it to me. Canelo is a flat footed fighter. Very flat footed. He's a flat footed fighter. That's why I gave the ring IQ more to Calvin Smith. Yeah. You know what I mean? I did. Yeah. I said, I said, uh, they call it I, in. I won't take Canelo on his toes, have you? No. You know, only only time I, I tried to see Canelo get on his toes is when he's fighting a boxer and he start getting tagged and he don't know what to do. Then he'd be like, well, maybe I should try the boxing. Because here's the thing, Canelo. The reason why you don't see him on toes a lot of nothing because, you know, you know, look, since he's a fat foot fighter, his style of fighting is he want to stand there and bang with you so he can get his body shots in and try to break you down with, you know, the body shots. Then he... Try to scope out an open, open. Right. You know, for a good head shot or something to knock you out or whatever and stuff. But if you get him bang, if you stand there trying to go toe, toe to toe with him, he's gonna be banging your body up like a motherfucker and sneak in some some head shots on your ass. Oh man, he's a, he's a master combination when he on the inside. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. And he throw combinations on, on the inside and stuff, and that's why he don't like being on his toes and stuff. He wants you to come in. Yeah, master combination on the inside. Yeah. Yeah, he can put them. He can put them. He can unlock something on the inside, man. Yeah. Yeah, he he can put them shots together on the inside. So, but I'll tell you what, Callum Smith kind of remind me not all the way, but from a distance fighter and throwing combinations of a Diego Corrales. Oh yeah. Remember how Diego Corrales when he let his hands go. That's Callum Smith. You know he he when he when he let his hands go, man. I'm, now, I'm gonna tell you something else too. I, I'm, I'm doing a uh, comparison with, with that fight you talking about. Yeah. And uh, Mike Tyson Ward don't do you? Mike Tyson's a flat footed fighter. Roy Jones, you see him on his toes moving around. Very true. Now, everybody that Mike Tyson had been fighting. They always move around. They didn't want to get hit. They were scared of them and stuff. But that ain't that ain't the that ain't the uh, truth. As far as boxing go, when you're in that square circle, man, you don't want to stand there and get hit by a monster and shit, man. You want to move around, get them angles. You know what I'm saying? And, you know what I'm saying? Choose your openness. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, right. Because yeah. uh, Mike Tyson is a flat footer fighter. Well, that's that. Well, we see how that fight's gonna play out. So. Yeah. So, so is Tyson going to get frustrated and accidentally land one too hard? You know, his last I, exhibition I, I, fight. I'm thinking, I'm thinking he is. <laughs> look, look, his last exhibition fight, he knocked out Corey Sanders in the first round. And who? Where? Where? His last exhibition fight, he knocked out Corey Sanders in the first round. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exhibition. You know, yeah. it's not supposed to be knockouts, yeah. but... I'm just saying, man, they're fighting with 12-ounce gloves, which is not very much padding, and they have no headgear. Roy is the smaller guy. Tyson is the bigger guy, and he's a phenomenal puncher. Yeah, let's see, Tyson ain't giving a fuck about none of the rules. He's going to go in there and be fighting and shit, and I think Roy Jones uh, know that, too. They're going to they gonna, they gonna really be having a boxing match like they were in a championship match or something. They're not going to buy it by that shit, man. Right, so... 
So if, if Tyson hits Roy a little too hard and Roy gets back up, it's going to be a full-blown war. Point blank, period. We'll get to do well. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. And 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 uh, Danny Garcia, Earl Spence going to be a good fight. Uh, Theofima Lopez calling out Tank Davis. That will be a good fight. You know, uh, those fights will be easy to, to, uh, to make. That, that one right there, that'll be easy to make. But then you got the other motherfucker talking in the background. Who was it? Haney? Who was it? There was somebody in the background talking. Uh, you know, Haney's a good fighter. Haney's a good fighter. But I think Haney is not on the level that he think he is. But Haney's a good fighter. He's an undefeated fighter. He's a champion. He's not on a level that he's think he is. He's at he's at a good plateau, but he's not at that plateau. He didn't quite break the ceiling, you know. Uh-huh. Right, you know. Uh, I would like to see him and Ryan Garcia get it on. Ryan Garcia is trying to get there. Devin Haney, you know, you won't you give Ryan Garcia that opportunity to fight? He's undefeated. He's smashing his Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia is smashing his opponents. Cause Ryan Garcia, that would, that would really test both of their metal for them to fight each other. That would test both of their metal. You know, that will that will that will give Devin Haney the shine that he needs, and that will give Ryan Garcia the shine that he needs. That's right. That will open up the door. For Tank Davis, that will open up the door for Theofima Lopez. Yeah. And and do it in in in, in, in emphatic impression. <laughs> yeah. And do it in an emphatic style, you know. Make it make it very emphatic, very, you know. Put some yeah. passion behind that um, spectacular win. Yeah. So. We'll see if if that materializes, if that that fight will unveil, if that fight will happen. But I believe that's what should happen. Devin Haney got a belt. Ryan Garcia is like he's shining on every fight. Like you said, you wanna you wanna prove something. Fight Ryan Garcia, and and, and the winner out of that fight will will, will put somebody at the at at, at, at a higher um, number one ranking, I should say. It'll put them, you know, it, 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 they'll shine more. Yeah, yeah. They will shine more. That Everybody will be eyeing them more, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. They're saying Ryan Garcia hasn't really been tested. Well, shit, fight Devin Haney. <laughs> Devin Haney, uh, you know, you say you this, you say that, but... You know, you, you, Devin Haney said he wanted to knock out Gamboa. He said uh, Terrence Crawford knocked him out um, in the sixth round and got rocked by Gamboa. He said uh, um, um, it took Tank Davis to knock him out in the, what, the last round? And, and he had an injured kill attendance, you know, and, and, and he said, I just want to go ahead and put my things on Gamboa and, and look emphatic and impressive much more than Terrence Crawford or Javante Tank Davis, yeah, and, and he couldn't. That's, that's that's a wrong way to go, though. Yeah, so I'm just saying. So you know he couldn't do none of that. So you're not that fighter that you think you are. So fight Ryan Garcia. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Right there in your face. Right there in your face. I'm giving shots out to Ryan Garcia straight up. What's up, boy? True that boxer. <laughs> <laughs>